What's going on everybody, LK here, and today I want to talk about some Street Fighter 6. I uploaded some footage of the game in July when I got to play and watch at EVO. A lot of people have been talking about the game, they've been very excited. One of the most important things about this game I haven't really seen anyone discuss, it's how this is the beginning of a new fighting game era. In my opinion, new fighting game eras begin when a new numbered Street Fighter begins. The last time a new Street Fighter game came out was in 2015 with Street Fighter 5, so it's been a whole seven years and the re reason why i feel this way is usually because what street fighter does in a 2d space other games tend to follow in the ideas that the game presents so an extreme of this is street fighter 2 mostly because this game pretty much started the genre competitively right so because of street fighter 2 various snk games like final fight king of fighters Garo, sam show all those various games that they made uh, that are still around mk is another one but then there are some like carnal's revenge which while infamous doesn't really have a modern iteration so in street fighter 2's case it's just that there's a genre and people make fighting games now street fighter 4 is pretty important because it's kind of like a renaissance of fighting games right the idea behind street fighter 4 is to bring people back to the genre using nostalgia so this game is based off street fighter 2 the original roster was all, just a ton of characters from street fighter 2 of course there was a couple of newcomers like crimson viper who was very fun to play once they established that baseline they were able to use the new mechanics add new characters and have a game that lasted for a long time I think that MK9 definitely falls into this as MK kind of just had a bad reputation, just like kind of just like troll game until MK9 kind of reestablished it as a serious fighting game series. Guilty Gear Exert leans heavily into this. So Guilty Gear Exert is based off Guilty Gear XX Sharp Reload, which at that time was a huge, huge game in Japan. So it has the same idea of all, all the classic Guilty Gear characters are there. There are some newcomers, there's new mechanics, but if you played the old version, you can play the current version. So in that way, Street Fighter V was a pretty big deal because Street Fighter V had a ton of problems on release. There are a bunch of videos about all the mistakes that Capcom made and all the complaints that people had. As far as the game play, like how it actually plays out in matches, the main thing I remember hearing is just people saying about how dry the game was, how easy it was, how scrubby it was. And of course you hear this a ton in every new release. If you're a Guilty Gear Strike player or a Dragon Ball player from release, you definitely remember hearing this about the game that you played. It was pretty extreme in the case of Street Fighter V. And again, a lot of games in the Street Fighter V era had an, an emphasis on accessibility in a more extreme way compared to previous fighting games. And when I talk about accessibility, it's just ease of play, like how easily people can do things, making buffers bigger, making damage higher. You've heard these before. So the important thing about Street Fighter VI in particular is how receptive everyone is to the game so far. So it's not just trailers and things like that. Like usually people are really hyped for the trailers. And then once they actually hear about mechanics and stuff or try the game, they start listing the complaints. But at this point now, plenty, not everybody, but plenty of people have gotten to try the game and it's only had like really good reviews so far. There's a closed beta test early next month also. So that's a really unique thing about it so far is that everyone likes it already. The previous era, Street Fighter V, there's usually changes to the game that people make that people really don't vibe with between Dragon Ball Super Dash or Guilty Gear changing Gatlings and having the wall system. There's usually something that people really complain about. This game doesn't really have that. Also, when I compare it to the original Street Fighter V footage from like season one, it looks a little bit more like Street Fighter IV or Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Um, something you would expect much deeper in the game's life cycle. But outside of the game itself, it's also a lot of the single player options as well. So a huge thing about Street Fighter V, uh, such an extreme example of a game having to grow into itself. Missing modes that people tend to expect from a fighting game and leaning hard into the games as a service model. Exposing too that like, while many of us, especially hardcore fighting game players, consider the versus mode to be the entire point of the game that like, it is a fighting game. The point is to fight other people, right? But not everybody wants to fight, and more classic games have plenty of options of other things to do. Blaze Blue, for example, has a full-fledged story mode in the game. Each version has a very in-depth story mode that's pretty long. Disclaimer, I only played CT story mode, by the way. After that, I was like, ah, it's a little, a little too anime for me. But there's plenty of single content here between the story mode, combo trials, as you'd expect. 
where Street Fighter V doesn't really have any of that. People were starving for things like a survival mode and just one player modes in general. With Project L being the Attack on Titan in the background, looming, waiting for their turn, people really expecting that game to just shift what fighting game developers start to pay attention to. Street Fighter VI is actually getting ahead of the game a little bit. The World Tour mode and the lobby seems to be very, very open and gives you a lot of options to play the game the way you want. I actually think this is a really major factor with Smash as well. So of course we have the hardcore, sweaty Smash tournaments that we're all used to, but also there's a plethora of not only single player modes, but ways you can vary the multiplayer modes to do what you want, either making them really crazy or maybe making it ultra sweat. It just depends on what you want to do. Now, Guilty Gear specifically tends to come at the end of fighting game cycle, right? So if we define Street Fighter 4, for example, as the beginning of that era and Street Fighter 5 as the beginning of our current era, Street Fighter 5 comes out in 2015, Exert comes out in like 2014, Street Fighter 6 comes out in 2023, Drive comes out in 2021. So Guilty Gear tends to come at the end, which is usually why people are always like, man, like this game is so amazing. Like why aren't other games doing this? Because they've had time to see what other people are doing and improve on it. So it gives me quite a bit of hope actually that everyone is actually excited for the game after trying it. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying it out in the closed beta test as well and give a more specific look at the mechanics, how the game plays, and how I feel about it initially. Let me know how you guys feel though. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, definitely feel free to leave in the comment section below. Like and subscribe if you guys feel like it, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace out.